And it's time to say good morning, of course. Today, the 23rd day of November. Good morning to all of you, wherever you are. And thank you. Thank you very much for being with us this morning and joining us. And, well, you know, gracing us with your company and allowing us into your space through the morning show today. This is the morning show coming to you live from our studios in Billy City. I am Ernesto. And it is Tuesday, so obviously this week, uh, we have business perspective as usual uh, later on this morning we'll be talking about a web series produced by Belizewood Studios the series premiered on YouTube on November 5 we'll be talking a little bit more about that with the director and of course the producers and uh, I don't know if you are a fan or follower of the lion man well he, he does uh, running Actually, he does running for a living. And the King Lion's second 101-mile run will be taking place soon. Uh, he'll be joining us and telling us about that later on this morning as well. Just imagine, 101-mile run. We'll be talking more about that. That's the morning we have lined up for you here on The Morning Show. Bolida played 28 to 8, 28. Pick three numbers are 261. Bolida 28. Pick three numbers are 261. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with the continuation of the morning show after this break. Every business is powered <clears throat> by their people. You can help improve the work experience for all your employees with the cloud based solution Neo People. Neo People puts you in easy command of all your employee core people functions like payroll, benefits, leave management, document management, and employee data, giving you the tools you need to manage your workforce from recruitment to retirement. Visit our website at neopeople.bz. And again, welcome to you wherever you are. As I said, the morning show continues. And this morning's first portion is, of course, hosted by Giacomo Sanchez and Jody Williams in Business Perspective. Uh, good morning to you, gentlemen. Hi. Good morning, Ernesto. Um, Hi. Good morning, Jody. Good morning, good morning and uh, welcome to the Business Perspective Show. We're here today on November 23rd on a beautiful Tuesday morning. And uh, how are you today, Giacomo? Uh, it's pretty good, pretty good. Um, you know, we're entering the, the uh, Christmas season, and um, and so uh, I think that these might be uh, some of the final series in our show for the remainder of the year. Indeed, indeed. Last week I said um, that we would. Yeah, we will be back to the show and I'm um, literally back with you um, for the first time hosting and uh, it's been a, it's a pleasure to be here on the business perspective um, to share what we have uh, with the country today and you're right Christmas is soon approaching um, you know we have some minor rain in parts of the country and I just like to say to everyone listening you know um, going from point A to point B please take your time roads are slippery and also you know speeding Speeding is becoming very worse in the least, so um, that everyone they drive with due care and attention, especially these uh, these days. You know, Christmas is coming and it's getting very busy on the road. Yes. Uh, 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 
politics standpoint, um, the government um, is relaxing the, the protocol somewhat. So, um, the curfew pushes back to 10 o'clock. Um, and, and that is good for, for certain businesses that have been decimated um, over the past year or so. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we, we, we just need to continue as, as a collective community um, observing protocols to ensure that, you know, we, we, are, we remain safe, um, keep each other safe, etc. Indeed, indeed. Um, I believe that, yes, the curfew is being extended to accommodate um, those businesses, especially the ones uh, who work late. And I, you know, we are at the end of November, and I believe they are seeing that um, extra activity, and hopefully that um, this extended curfew means that we have more police on hand, um, patrolling as well, and at the same time um, that everyone be extra careful, especially with, yes, like as you said, with wearing a mask, um, protecting each other, and uh, hand sanitizing and everything else, and all the other protocols. Yeah. yeah. And as you mentioned, um, law enforcement, um, I'm sure you're aware that um, he even admitted by the, the minister himself that, you know, the resources are stretched a bit thin. And um, so it goes without saying, I mean, if we all do our part, then it helps in, in you know, um, uh, a citizenry that, that kind of, you know, we, we, we look out for each other. I 100% agree, Giacomo. Um, <clears throat> with more... Uh, um, with more freeing up of the of the protocols means more responsibility on our end, as also as individuals of the society of belief. Um, that doesn't mean we're gonna take a lapse back and you know say, guess what you know things are getting better. Uh, so indeed, um, I guess everyone from businesses, private sector to public sector, to everyone must be extra vigilant. And, um, yes, more than ever, we need law enforcement. As you see, we the crime is increasing in Belize, and um, I don't think it will get any easier for closer to Christmas. So um, I believe, hopefully, that the minister and the police have a plan that would combat this and will also keep our citizen, citizenry uh, safe during these upcoming holidays. Yeah. yeah. Maybe for a moment we could um, kind of, uh, reflect back uh, quickly on... Um, the government's initiative in terms of the forum, the um, investment forum that was held recently, uh, which I thought was um, somewhat, of, you know, quite, quite a success. And um, there's still a buzz about it, and, and folks, um, uh, quite quite a bit of folks that um, tuned in and, and learned a lot from the from the experience. And so um, it's a follow through now when it comes to uh, the varying initiatives from the, um, the public sector to, to ensure that, that the enabling environment keeps improving to ensure that, you know, um, business turnaround time shortens, um, the investor experience is a bit more um, welcoming and, and the like. Indeed, uh, I actually tuned in to the investment uh, summit. Uh, it was a very good event especially for the businesses that were there trying to look for investments. And you're totally right. Uh, public sector must now be ready. Um, person thought that the hard part was the actual day to sit down with uh, potential investors and to, to meet and greet and to try to make business. But actually, after the summit is where the real work happens, you know, where you actually try to seal the deal. Um, I think right now we need all investment possible for beliefs, especially businesses who need that extra financing to to probably um, do new products, to keep afloat, to, to invest into operations, to improve it, operations. And uh, yes, let's hope that the private sector uh, business people that were there um, do as much follow-ups as possible because the real work happens now after the summit. And um, you know, if, if they could see the deal and secure that investment so that they could pump it into their business, because then it's a win-win situation. If businesses are able to get that investment, the government also also gains as well. Yeah. And on the topic of um, our opening, so re relaxing restrictions, opening up the economy, um, the one topic that comes um, afloat is that of um, our land borders and, and 
the, the timing of that, the opening of that. And I and I think even though um, we we we're we're uh, experiencing some relaxing, I think it's a good thing that that may be uh, uh, an area that that the government could consider as staging, and, and we don't necessarily need to um, sort of hurry that process up because um, you know we, we don't want like a huge surge because our healthcare system is already overwhelmed. And so, you know, um, with, with the incidents north and west of us, that that we, we don't want to kind of bring that bring that upon us. That's a that's a very very good point, Giacomo. And I hundred percent agree with you on that. In my opinion, once they, we could keep those land borders uh, closed for the moment, especially um, in this year. And it's not only the problem with the the COVID. Uh, infections across the border that you know we could be susceptible to that if we cross the border but you know also with local business you know we want to try to keep as much business as possible uh, with our business here in Belize uh, especially now from November to December and probably early next year so it, I believe it's a it's a very uh, important topic and subject that uh, something everyone must be tuned into and uh, it's something that we must enforce and try to push to keep the land borders um, closed for now so that our businesses could um, make most and capitalize uh, during the Christmas season, especially. Yeah. And, you know, looking down the road, uh, when, when when we do decide to um, formally open the border, reopen our borders, it is extremely important that um, there's a combination of factors that needs to be considered in terms of incentivizing our local population to keep our dollars at home. Uh, and so uh, that in itself will be an exercise that the Chamber will definitely um, be employing its resources. So, uh, so supporting the sector in terms of additional initiatives that could be taken. Um, yes. You know, uh, there, there's, there's so many things that could be discussed, but. Um, I'm not sure we we have a we need need a two, maybe a couple of segments to, to go through those. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, yeah, I I totally agree with you, um, Giacomo. Once borders are open, hopefully there's um enforced initiatives there to so that it's not just an in and out for person just wanting to go and buy food and come come across. Maybe a valid reason. Uh, you know, maybe buy some. A sizable amount of groceries or or, or something uh, to see a doctor to to probably um, to show something that you know you're going across the border. It's it's very it's a very important topic, and uh, yeah, like you said, um, businesses must must keep a uh, keen watch of what will happen from now um, concerning land borders. And, uh, we are seeing that COVID is not it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I don't believe it's going, going to be with us always. And um, yes, across the border, the population there maybe have it have the uh, COVID under control, but their population is so big compared to Belize. Yeah. yeah. And and you know I I believe that um the the you know it, it's definitely a topic for discussion in terms of how best can we um, because uh, you know there is only certain limitations that you can put on people's um. Uh, ability to, to, to freely travel and so um, you know it, it's, it's a very uh, delicate balance that has to be struck. Yes I am I yeah I I had a about three days ago I had some friends telling me oh and you know they can't wait until the border opens they want to go to Chetomal to party I told them you know maybe that might not be soon you know I'm not sure but I and you know they they don't want to talk to me anymore you know they want to go across the border to, to party but um, i mean right now all of us is responsible for each other um you know we are still in a pandemic we you know we need to keep as much dollars as possible in belize and uh, in my opinion 100 percent, i say that keep the land borders as close as much as possible and if it do, does reopen like you said, there are some incentives um, and some probably, um, let's say, some some fees to cross the board, to be honest. Because, you know, we want to 
protect our citizens as well because it's not everyone that will go across. It will be a small percentage of the population. Yeah, that, that is true. Um, you know, and, and other um, topical issues. Um, the, the, I think in, in the early news today, um, we heard about the, the in the region itself uh, a drop in cases, and so to me that, that that's a that's a pretty positive signal, um, and 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 I do believe uh, the, the rate of recoveries also in, in, in Belize that 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 is also encouraging in that although you know people are um, getting ill, um, perhaps they, they're not subjected to having to um, be hospitalized, and. As much as that could be avoided, I think I think we're in a better place. Yes, I agree, Giacomo. Um, this being controlled worldwide, um, the vaccination process has been uh, going a step ahead. We, I, I see the the mass procedures, especially here in Belize, are is more enforced as well. So, um, as we go on, as the time passes, we're hopefully we see that drop and. That there's not much more fifth and sixth and seventh waves, but with the environment, you know, we have mutations of viruses, and um, COVID is a virus. We may never know that it might be a super mutation down the road when the weather gets hot again. Um, but um, let's be vigilant. Let's follow protocols. Everyone listening in, um, you know, we want to spend time with our families, but to be responsible as well when it is. Yes, 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 yes. I, I believe we had um, some some guests lined up, but um, they, they may have been delayed, and so um, you know, um, hence the reason we're we're um, at liberty to um, take on any of the uh, current topics at the moment. Yes, and we we have a very uh, good lineup today. Uh, very interesting. We have um, our president of the BCCI and executive council, Ms. Marissa. And um, our CEO, Mrs. Aikman, will be discussing various topics, uh, what the chamber is doing, uh, looking forward to the new year, the new year interventions that, um, you know, BCCI is um, is pushing and is um, it's lobbying, lobbying for, for the country of Belize. And we are very interested in our second um, segment. We have uh, Dr. Martinez and Ms. Denicia, who will be discussing about the GCF private sector readiness project and what does this mean for our private sector in Belize. So um, we have a very good lineup today and our viewers uh, will get very good information. I say this will be a very interesting show today, Giacomo. Yes, yes. Uh, just on, on another note, um, <clears throat> I believe that um, we we're, see we're also seeing some some uptick in, in the tourism sector, which is a, a good thing because in as much as, um, you know, our general feeling is that the, at least from an economic standpoint that there should be increased diversification you can't sidestep the fact that the economy the, our economy is tied to, to tourism and uh, we, we've for many years developed this product and so it's difficult for you to just uh, put that aside and, and that, that so many that has so much many um associated uh businesses that, that um, it's tied to it, that it's, it's an important part of the way of life for Belize. And, and that, that goes even yes. for going forward. Indeed, I know there has been a lot of talk that, you know, we mustn't put all our eggs in one basket, that um, we must diversify from tourism. But um, on the realistic numbers on the ground, Giacomo, is that even if we try to push in other sectors, agriculture, um, making products um, service in the service industry tourism is still um, number one for Belize for the time being. And um, um, even here in Stan Creek, I see a lot of more tourists indeed coming. I guess it's getting cold in those parts of the of where they're coming from. But uh, at the, like say, for example, at our Marishar's factory, we're seeing more uh, tourists coming in for tours um, than ever before. I think this month here, we, November, we have seen much more than October and September. And it's uh, it's good news um, in Hopkins as well. We see um, places like Ella's Cool Spot and the resorts. Um, we see many intakes of um, in persons coming in and, and getting their rooms and going out to eat and dine and um, enjoying Belize. And that's a good sign for Belize indeed. Yeah, yeah. there's been a great deal of investment over the years, 
Uh, I mean, tremendous investment in in the in the product itself. And Belize has a lot of what um, the, the tourists want. And so um, it's inescapable that, that we um, ensure that, you know, every initiative that can be taken to um, encourage, um, you know, traveler to come to Belize, I think is a good thing. Indeed, and, and it's a domino effect too, because um, once the tourists come in, they have to eat, they have to drink water, they have to drink soft drink. Um, they may go to the doctor if they're not feeling well. So everyone benefits in the economy of Belize. It's not only um, persons in the tourism. And uh, I'm really glad to see the numbers pick up, especially for Christmas. Everyone coming out on the street to, on the street side to, to sell their wines, their, fo their food. Uh, we see the tourists stopping at Berta's Tamales. It, it, it was really full this weekend uh, due to the, the long 19th as well. It's good to see business picking up slowly, and Giacomo, this, that's really a piece of the eyes. Yeah. Uh, well, Jody, uh, I think... Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yes, it's already 7 o'clock, guys. Uh, we will be back um, with our first segment on the business perspective, and we will be back. Introducing the 2022 Executive Planner. Keep your notes safe and private. Keep to your plans and your appointments. Join the Angeles Press Limited and the Love Foundation in transforming lives with love. Get your 2022 planners early and donate towards a positive initiative. The proceeds from all planners purchased at Angeles Press is contribution towards the Love Foundation supporting the education of the youth, the empowerment of a community, and putting single mothers to work. You can even customize your 2022 planner, pick your color, choose the name, and select a logo. It's that easy. Be a part of the social change. In Belize City, call 223-5777. In Belmopan, call 822-3861. Or visit your nearest Angeles Press office to place your orders today. signs of kidney disease. 90% of people with kidney disease don't know they have it. Know the warning signs. 1. Blood in your urine. Sign number 2. Dark brown urine. 3. High blood pressure. 4. Difficulty breathing or sleeping. 5. Dry and itchy skin. 6. Urinate more often than usual. 7. Persistent puffiness around your eyes. 8. Swollen ankles or feet. 9. Poor or loss of appetite. Don't panic. If you have one or more of these warning signs, see a doctor immediately. Kidney disease can be successfully treated. Brought to you by the Sunrise Rotary Club of Belize, the Love Foundation, and the Kidney Association of Belize. For more information, please visit www.niddk.nih.gov slash information slash kidney disease.
Welcome back all, this is the morning show and this morning being Tuesday, we have business perspective on and hosting that are Giacomo Sanchez and Jody Williams, who are welcome back now to continue with their portion of the show and of course introduce their guests. Good morning guys. Thank you Ernesto and uh, welcome back to the Belize Perspective show and um, this is our first segment and we are here with um, Mrs. Kim Aikman, CEO of the Belize Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and also uh, President um, Marisa Langsworth of BCCI and Executive Council. Welcome to the show, and um, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning, and good morning, Belize. Thank you. So, Adam Press, um, um, now that we have um, have you for the for the remainder of this segment, um, you know, it, it, I think it's it's that time of the, the year that we, it's, it's a bit reflective, but also um, what we want to know. I, I think the country wants to know where are we at at the BCCI, the initiatives that we're taking. Um, sh sh share with us um, where we are. Sure. Well. Thanks again for, for having me this morning um, to share. And, um, you know, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to catching up on the Chamber's activities. I'll encourage you to ask um, CEO and I the, the difficult questions that, um, that need to be asked as well as the easy ones. Um, but generally, in terms of our last year, so let's say we're doing like a year in review, um, we've had we've had several um, you know sort of, of of activities that we've taken on for different topics. Many of those activities actually have were, were happening even before I became president, which shows that we have basically kept several of the same advocacy topics for many many years. Um, what that also shows is that. The, there are certain things that are extremely important to the business community. And if we just hit those right spots in terms of affecting the business community positively, um, we would take care of quite a few of the recurring issues that have faced the business community for 10 years or more. So let me give an example of, of that. One of the things that has constantly been been lobbied for through the BCCI has been the um, the comprehensive review of the labor legislation. Um, as you may recall, when we were in the height of COVID in 2020 and we had our first major lockdown, one of the biggest issues faced by employers at that point in time was how do I deal with my employees in a time like this? I don't want to fire them. I don't have the funds to pay out all of these benefits. I'm pretty sure when the economy recovers that I want these people back. So how can I work out an arrangement with them that works? Now, <clears throat> there was the issue that um, our Labor Act was completely silent on how to deal with this sort of matter. Um, what that meant was that we heard lots of complaints about different approaches that employers were taking, but they simply took those approaches to try to um, to manage their own circumstances based on their what they were foreseeing as the future with COVID, what their budgets look like, and that sort of thing. So, you know, one of the things that we've pushed majorly for is that not only does the, the does that portion of the Labor Act need to be reviewed, but the entire Labor Act needs to be reviewed. As a result of that lobbying, the Ministry of Labor has, um, through the Labor Advisory Board, uh, assigned that Labor Advisory Board to lead in the comprehensive review of the Labor Act. Um, our CEO sits on that board and she, she has been in the process with them in terms of putting together the right terms of reference for the committee to look at as they move into the actual review. 
So if that stays on track, for example, then that would allow for major changes not seen within, I mean, the last several years relating to the Labor Act and in its entirety. Now, one thing that's also important there as well is how the occupational safety and health provisions fit into a reviewed Labor Act, for example. Now, the OSH has been a, a buzzword for many years as well. Um, we've made major progress with uh, partnership with the unions um, in terms of how to come to some agreement as to what the OSH should look like. Um, of course, there are clauses where, you know, one side will, will, will want it in their direction over the other. But one of the things that we have pushed for is collaboration and compromise because too often we allow contention to delay progress. And so if we can compromise and have progress, then we're in much better shape than if we are quarreling with one another as stakeholders and not having progress. So, I mean, I'd like to highlight that because for, for me during, during my term, one of the things that I have really tried to, to focus on has been let us see actual black and white change. It may have to do with my training as an attorney, but I, I really want to see change that I know that even when I leave this post, that change continues. Even when I run my business, that change affects my business positively as well. And so, you know, really that is that is one angle of it that we have been looking at. Um, uh, and not, with, um, go ahead. Speaking of which, um, in terms, two things. In terms of timeline, um, do you see um, the do you see us arriving at, at, at a compromise point going into 2022? Um, do you think it, it might be pushed further down? And and is it several factors that is um, delaying the, the the legislation from moving forward? Um, I can ask Miss Miss Kim, our CEO, to speak about the timeline since she sits on the committee. Um, as it relates to, to factors that affect um, timeline and delay and that sort of thing, what we have to remember is that for every legislative process, it, it is subject to delays because once we start to put the provisions in place, the stakeholders um, will have their feedback and often there is a back and forth with feedback when it comes to the actual drafting. Now, one thing before before Ms. Kim speaks about the progress of the um, of the committee itself, one thing that I, I appreciated in the process of the, um, the OSH, for example, was that what we were looking at was actual provisions already. They were draft provisions, and so we could, that were going to then be recommended for formal drafting instructions, etc. So what that helps with when we go into the drafting process with already drafted provisions that we see as fit for us, it helps to influence the process even more because the provisions have already kind of been tailored to the situation. Um, many times what happens otherwise is that stakeholder consultations occur and there is a principle, a concept that is agreed to. But by the time drafting instructions go to solicitor general, etc., and you see what comes out of those drafting instructions, it can differ quite a bit from what was agreed in principle with stakeholders, which is why having this approach of actually doing some of the drafting of the provisions and making direct recommendations into provisions has um, will will possibly help us to cut down on um, timelines. Okay. See you. See you. Hi, good morning. Um, in terms of the, the timelines, actually, let me back up a little bit because I, I just wanted to say a lot of people always ask, what does the chamber do? Why are we here? Etc. I know Marissa jumped straight into um, initiatives that we've taken, but the chamber really is a membership organization. It formed in 1920 when a group of businessmen came together to try to lobby to make the business environment conducive for them to do business. As a result, the, the chamber also became the employer's representative for the ILO, and that is how we, we are 
sitting on the Labor Advisory Board as the employer's representative. Um, in terms of the of the review of the Labor Act, we're uh, pretty much still in the nascent stages of this project. We have just, as tripartite partners, which is the chamber representing employers, the NTUCB representing the workers and the government, the Ministry of Labor has some representatives up there. We are looking at the TOR for the consultant and the our projected timeline is probably about 24 months from start to finish and, and that's what we're doing. We know that it's very um, ambitious because we know the amount of work that is currently at the Solgen's office for the drafters, etc. But that is where we are right now with the the comprehensive review of the Labour Act. Yes, um, Warren. Also, um, we have seen other interventions happening at the chamber. Um, I think one that really uh, captures the, uh, the attention of the division is the one with um, campaign financing legislation. Um, it's a serious one. Um, I know the BC has been lobbying, but uh, is there more uh, details and information concerning the campaign financing? Well, campaign financing, um, we had started, I think we actually did have a draft at one point in time of a campaign financing bill that we, um, that even prior to elections last year, we had been looking at and pushing for uh, with other stakeholders who were also pushing for the same. So we had worked with with um, one or two others who were very vocal in the area to, to put together uh, what we thought was an acceptable draft of legislation for campaign financing. Now, a campaign financing falls into, into the UNCAC and good governance aspect of things, which we continue to push for. Um, you know, the, a, a lot of it, when it comes to campaign financing when it comes to well we have we have some progress with illicit enrichment um, legislation and that sort of thing but all of those legislations have to be planned and have to be accepted and have political will behind them as well to be passed so for example we did see progress when it came to the illicit enrichment um, legislation. We did see progress when it came to the whistleblowers legislation. However, you know, campaign financing for one reason or the other has not been touched. Um, what that reason is, I leave it to your imagination. But the, you know, what it really means is that there is a continued um, need to, for need for lobbying as it relates to covering the gamut of UNCAC um, legislations that are needed. We can't leave a gap because it doesn't fit into what we would prefer. Um, and I know that there have been pronouncements um, publicly from. I, I suppose you would call them members of the public sector or, or politicians in general, where it has been said that, you know, campaign financing is not easy. The business community would equally um, have an outcry if there was a requirement for disclosure, etc. cetera. Um, but I believe that, you know, the, the need for campaign financing is not just to serve the few that are involved in it, meaning the financiers and the, re the receivers of that finance. It really is to serve the wider population as it relates to transparency, accountability of funds, and also in a way equaling the playing field for those um, who don't have extreme amount of financing behind their political campaigns as well, because the legislation did um, have provision for a fund of some sort that could assist with the um, reimbursement of, of finances to candidates, depending on the proportion of votes that they got and that sort of thing. So it's intended to also provide for those independent candidates who do not have the, the um, financial weight of a political party behind them. So it's absolutely important, Jody, there's no doubt about that. But 
as with any legislation, um, it has to go through the houses. It has to first be drafted at Attorney General's ministry, has to go through the House, House of Representatives and the Senate. Those are, um, those are government processes, those are legislative processes. And so the, you know, the, the right the right champions have to be in place to put these things on the table for them to um to, to become a reality. Yeah, and at present as you're um as you're talking, um it occurred to me too that um, another looming um lobbying effort is that of our um the trade licensing reform. Um how how is that going? Well, at this point in time, this is my favorite lobby. I have to say, it's one, it's one that I think is extremely important as well, and one that it has the elements of being a low-hanging fruit. You know, we always speak about those low-hanging fruits. Let's pick it. Let's reap it. At this point in time, um, once again, it does take political will. It is change of legislation again, um, and also it is. It is a conversation with the municipal authorities about the, the approach to revenue earning, which is a big conversation. Imagine if you as a business had passive income just coming in, like someone said, oh, um, you know, I'd like to use your wall as a background for my pictures. You don't even have to paint the wall. All you have to do is let them pay you $5 and they can take a picture by your wall. That's passive income, right? So you're making $5 for everybody that comes in and says, let me take a picture by your wall. Now, if someone comes in and says, nobody can take pictures by that wall unless you've painted it, wallpapered it, put some gold flakes on top of it worth $5,000, then we have a problem because your passive income is no longer the same. There's no an expense to it. There's no reduction in your income. So let's relate that analogy back to your municipalities who for several years have been collecting trade license fees on a formula that we consider to be a flawed formula. Um, the issue with that, of course, is that any formula that we try to, um, to recommend at this point in time is going to have an impact to an extent on revenue, right? Um, the intention of the trade license reform includes predictability, revenue neutrality, and the like. And so what the intention really is, is that um, you're supposed to be able to at least allow for the councils, the, the town councils, city councils to not necessarily um, get a, a financial boost from this change. And also for the businesses as well, we have to think about whether some of the changes in formula could cause a trade license fee to go um, to go down quite a bit, which could also cut into municipality revenues. So two aspects that our lobbying um, has been successful in so far from what we are hearing in the consultations is that, well, first let me say what our preferred our preferred position would really be. Um, we do not believe that the, the annual rental value is an accurate way of calculating what a business should pay as a trade license fee. Um, it is our submission that there should only be a flat fee of sorts that allows you to, to trade in a certain municipality. Um, the annual rental value aspect opens things up to discretion. It opens things up to, to um, you know, corruption in its own way. And so that's why we've been saying, look, forget about annual rental values. Let us go into a flat fee system. Um, however, there are some changes which, you know, from our consultations, it seems as though these changes are going to go through at least in the interim while we continue to lobby for the ideal situation. Um, so in that interim position, what we are trying to do is to make it as least impactful on the business community as possible. So one of those things that we did was that um, even though there will likely still be a, a sticking to the annual rental value aspect of things, the, the question of productive footprint has always been an issue. So for example, if you have a, 
a staircase, a corridor, a parking lot, a nice bathroom for your um, for your customers. Generally, all of that would be measured as your productive footprint, and so you're charged based on square footage of that entire rental space, which is your productive footprint. One of the things that we've lob lobbied very heavily for is to exclude certain parts of a business's square footage to not count as productive footprint so that you will end up paying on a smaller square footage um, reading or assessment. And we have had success with that based on what we're seeing in the consultations. The, the definition of productive footprint is changing to not include those things. So if you, if you expand your parking lot, if you put in two more bathrooms for your customers that take up more space, those should not count towards your trade license assessment. Another aspect that we um, we looked at very seriously was, okay, if we're going to be doing this change now, um, and there is a possibility that based on a change of formula, since we're not going to flat fees, a change of formula could increase the trade license fee for some businesses and could decrease the trade license fee for some businesses. The compromise that we were able to come to was our concern being the extreme increase for businesses. We wanted to protect businesses from having a 50% or 60% increase if the formula changed. What we put, what we we lobbied for was a cap, a ceiling, so that if your if your trade license fee were to go up, say sixty percent, then there should be a it, it should stop at a point like maybe ten. We haven't worked out the numbers, but maybe five percent or ten percent would be the limit that we're looking at. And then finally, the provisional license, um, and that is when there is a wait time. Or from your application for your trade license to when you receive it, right? Um, and you get the certificate. I, I also experienced this in my business as well. And remember that the certificate is needed for several things. It's needed at your bank when you're going for your bank account. It's needed with tax office. It's needed with if you have to go to a financial um, intelligence unit, those sorts of things. So you really need to have a license to get your business going. And so we've been able to lobby for a provisional license, um, which has been adopted as one of the, the, the aspects that would be taken on as well. And there are several other changes that we're in agreement with uh, um, that have to do with the um the, the composition of the of the trade licensing board the ability to appeal a decision that you're not in agreement with to a tribunal body those sorts of things do fit into those principles of accountability transparency um and efficiency that we're hoping to see as a part of of trade license to make it easier to do business very, very interesting madam Perez. um, um coming back to um this is McMahon, CEO of BCCI. Um, areas of ongoing work, you know, um, we're coming to a new year. Um, the, is there any more areas that the BCCI will lobby and push forward and for its members and for the, the country on a whole? Um, elaborate more on that, CEO. Yes, thank you, thank you guys. Um, the chamber has quite a bit on its plate. Every Every election cycle, the chamber comes up with what we call an advocacy manifesto or a business manifesto that we present to various leaders of the political parties on areas that would make uh, the business environment more conducive to doing business and for business sustainability. So um, we, among those, the trade license has been on the table, for, uh, I think, since 20. 14 or 2015, when we had uh, situations where some members um, reported to us that, that their bills went up by almost 300, 400%. And so we started the lobby with the uh, municipal bodies to have a more predictable and fair um, system of assessing the trade license. Actually, in most jurisdictions, actually, when when I, I we did our research um, in the region, and nobody knew what a trade license was. In other jurisdictions in the region, it's not being charged. Um, 
and the research that for those countries that uh, has a trade license, it's normally a flat fee. The way ours is, is being charged right now, it's more like a tax. It's a percentage on uh, your annual rental value. And that is one of the things that we lobbied very heavily for, for it to be a, a flat fee where it's predictable, where businesses can budget for it the year before and not be surprised by, by a, um, a bill in November for to be paid by January. Other places have it where it's paid throughout the year because currently as, as our, um, our system works, you have to pay everything up front in January, even if you uh, go out of business in February, you would have paid that entire year for of trade license. Um, so the trade license is among um, the things we are lobbying for. A comprehensive tax review is also um, among the things that we have been lobbying for, I think, since 2005. We are paying tax upon tax upon tax on our goods and services. And that leads to other areas like, like contraband. Or I, I was listening to another um, news station and they were asking people, what are you most interested in after the COVID li lifts? And nine out of 10 of the people said, oh, I want to go back to Chetomal to shop. So we have to start thinking, uh, why is Chetomal so attractive? Why is it that their goods and services are cheaper than ours in Belize? So we have to look at the very core of why it is cheaper. And we had, um, a couple of years ago, some years ago, we had looked at the percentage of taxes in, for every dollar that the government gets on any goods and service. And at that time, I can't remember the year because it seems like it's been a long time. I think it was 2008 or nine. It was about 60 cents of every dollar goes to taxes from a basket of goods. So we have to look at a, a new tax regime that doesn't, tax at every step of the way, making the end product more expensive. Um, so that is also in our, our plan. We had also looked at mass transit, the movement of labor from one area to the other, um, because it is so unreliable and, you know, it changes from day to day and workers get to work late. I have to commute to work. Many times I pass buses on the highway broken down with the, the people standing outside waiting for another bus to come. So we have to do something about that. Also the overcrowding, um, there has to be a system in place. Those are things that we had started lobbying for and continue to lobby for. It's, if you look at it in, in a, um, as a whole, it's overwhelming, but we have to chip away one at a time. And if I could add add here um, as well, just to complement what CEO said, um, it's important for, for people to understand that the chamber works sometimes seven days a week. We, we you know, we, we have our secretariat that works five days a week in terms of supporting the work of the chamber. But we are present on so many other committees that at times our representatives on those committees are working on the weekends with those committees as well. I will say it's at least over 50, five zero committees. I think Ms. Kim would say it's closer to over 60, six zero committees. And um, you know, the, the reason that we as she said, even though it's overwhelming, even though it stretches us as a chamber and the resources that we have, we know that it's important to be a part of these conversations. So we ensure that we're a part of those committees and we're present and we're contributing. So, you know, that that is really um, a big part of the work that the chamber does. We are there, we are present, and we're always the voice of the, the business community in these forums. Yeah. Thanks a lot, um, both uh, President and CEO. I mean, we've unfortunately fast run out of time. Um, we need to get you back um, because it, it sounds like a, there's a lot going on, and, and I'm sure the public is very interested in um, the initiatives that uh, the Chamber is taking. Uh, and with that, uh, we, we do uh, thank you for uh, sharing with us this morning, and we go to our break. Good morning. A moderate and relatively dry northerly airflow is prevailing behind a weak cold front. 
The forecast for today is for mostly sunny and mild conditions with little or no rain. Tonight will be partly cloudy and cool with isolated showers, mainly offshore. Winds over the open sea will be from the north to northwest at 10 to 20 knots and the seas will be moderate. High temperatures today will be around 82 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 86 inland but only 72 degrees up in the mountains. The outlook is for cloudy spells with a few light showers over the north on Wednesday, then mainly along the coast Wednesday night. There is a low tide at 6.54 this morning, a high at 1.04 this afternoon, another low 5.47 this evening and another high at 11.54 tonight. The sun rose at 6.02 this morning and will set at 5.15 this evening. The moon sets at 9.35 this morning and comes up again at 8.49 tonight. In the tropical weather outlook for the North Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, tropical cyclone formation is not expected during the next 48 hours. With that, we end this report from the Belize Weather Bureau. So, I'm going to wonder if by chance I could get your number. Nice. Of course. You have digital, right? <laughs> yeah. Of course. The truth is, your credit lasts way longer with DJ. Like, if you top off with like $30, that could last you 90 days. With the other guys, that must say 60. Then with the other guys, you have to use all your good, good prime credit before you even touch your bonus credit. But with DJ, could use your bonus credit before you even touch your primary credit. Like, what are the points to have free credit if you can't use it how you want? So, what are your number? Uh, let's give me one moment. So, uh, six or two. The truth is, only Digi offers nationwide LTE coverage, giving you the best mobile experience no matter where you are, fastest mobile data speeds, and the best call quality. It's a fact that with Smart, you get free unlimited everything. Only with Smart, you get unlimited data anytime. While with the other guy, it's only double data on weekends. With unlimited data every day with Smart, there's no need to wait. So, it's a fact that our unlimited plans beat the competition. Stop being measured and told when to use your data and get unlimited talk, text, and data. Experience the true, true unlimited plans with Smart. That's a fact. Make the switch and live smart. Region's healthcare workers are our heroes, and that's why we want to make sure you're protected against dangerous diseases that can harm you and your families. To all our amazing healthcare providers, please make sure you're up to date with your vaccines, from measles to influenza. And when it's your turn to get vaccinated against COVID-19, please make sure you do so as soon as possible. The COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective at protecting you, and they're our best shot at keeping our health services functioning. Thank you for all you do.
20 minutes away from 8 o'clock. This is the morning show and it's business perspective time. And we continue with the hosts, Giacomo Sanchez and Jody Williams. Over to you again. Good morning, viewers. And we are back with our second segment of the business perspective show today, uh, Tuesday, November 23rd. And we are here today with Ms. Janicia Tucker from the BCCI and head of the GCF Readiness Project and also Dr. Leroy Martinez. Um, welcome to the show, guys. Hi, good morning. Yes, good morning. Okay, and thanks for the invitation. Okay, okay sure. Um, so the subject uh, is the GCF, which is Green Climate on private sector readiness project. Um, so for our viewers, well, what is GCF and what does it mean for the private sector and for the country of Belize? Okay, so once again, good morning. So my name is Lira Martinez, I'm an economist and also the GCF focal point in the Ministry of Finance, uh, Economic Development and Investment. I work closer with uh, Dr. Osman Martinez, who is the Chief Executive Officer and also the National Designated Authority to the GCF. What is the GCF? The GCF is the largest climate fund in the world that assists um, developing countries such as Belize to adapt, mitigate to the impacts of climate change, such as uh, droughts, um, flooding, erosion, etc. The GCF has several funding windows. Each year, Belize receives one million for readiness. <clears throat> then we also receive a one-time allocation of three million US dollars to assist with national adaptation plans. Also, the GCF provides a simplified application process whereby entities can access up to 10 million grant. Then we have uh, the regular facility whereby your project can be above 10 million US dollars. Then we have the private sector facility whereby uh, entities such as credit unions and banks can access funding from the GCF. The GCF also provides um, four financial instruments. They provide grants, concessionary loans from one to 3% interest. They also provide guarantees and equity. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Um, hi, Ms. Janicia, welcome to the show. Hi, Jody. Thank you for having us. Um, so particularly this project that we are currently implementing, the name of the project is the Readiness Support for Strengthening um, Belize Private Sector's Access to Climate Finance. So that is the name of the project. And just to give you a little background, the project is being implemented by the Caribbean Development Bank with the support of the ministry which is the NDA of the GCS here in Belize, as Leroy mentioned. And the BCCI is supporting the ministry in uh, implementing the project. The BCCI role is to liaise with its members, to liaise with the private sector, to, to um, engage and to make that connection so that the project will run smoothly and we have a, have a um, good outcome within the private sector. Some of the main objectives of this project, uh, the main focus, I should say, would be to strengthen the private sector engagement with the GCS, as well as to build the capacity within the private sector to develop um, concept notes, as well as funding proposals to submit to the GCS. So this project is looking to to build capacity and engagement through knowledge building, basically. We want to get the private sector um, aware of the GCS, aware of the opportunities that the GCS has to offer, as well as to, to know and know how to leverage and use the services of the GCS to, to further enhance the, the private sector and the economy here in Belize. Yeah, so uh, good morning, uh, Leroy. Um, uh, you, you've um, given us a, a sneak peek uh, of what the, the, um, the GCF is, but um, I think uh, maybe our public would want to understand is if a business approach you um, or approach the, the, um, the fund, how, um, what, what type 
what type of um, interaction would, would we see? How, 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 how is connection made and, and what it is that they will be looking for? Okay, so in 2015, uh, through a cabinet decision, the Ministry of Economic Development was <clears throat> designated as the National Designated Authority. So one of the primary roles of the National Designated Authority, known as NDA, is to endorse um, project ideas or concept notes for submission to the GCF. Uh, so we provide no objection letters. We assist entities um, through with readiness funding to develop their project ideas into um, concept notes. To access funding from the GCF, um, you will need to engage uh, the NDA, who will then make sure your project is aligned to national strategies and policies. Also, this is whereby the NDA will help you to identify an accredited entity, because whenever you want to access funding from the GCF, it needs to go through either an accredited entity, one who has met all the, 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 all the requirements from the fund, or through a delivery partner. We have international accredited entities such as the World Bank, IDB. Then when it comes to regional, we have um, the Caribbean Development Bank, we have the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center known as 5Cs, we have the Central American Bank. Locally, we only have one national accredited entity and that's the Protected Areas Conservation Trust, who can access up to 10 million grant uh, just on environmental projects. Mm -hmm. But the step is easy, as soon as you contact the, the NDA, either me or Dr. Osman Martinez, we will then um, facilitate and provide you all the, the guidance. Okay. Hi, Mr. Um so let's say um, there's a business, uh, a member of of chamber that wants to learn how to apply. Is there any capacity building being done as leading up to access these funds? And is there a timeline where, like for example, if um, if they get to the proposal and so on, is there a timeline where they could access funds? Is there a timeline? Well, with this particular project, we have several capacity building um, events that we will be holding. Um, first of all, let me just um, give you an overall idea of the project. The project will be four phases. We Phase one is an inception. Phase two is the private sector capacity building and discussion forum, where the forum will focus on the capacitation of the private and private sector to access GCF funds. Um, phase three would be a scoping study and action plan to um, study the barriers that and the opportunities that Belizean businesses um, that they have accessing climate finance as well as the fourth phase is the GCF concept note preparation. At the end, we will be doing a call for proposals where we want um, private sector companies, members of the chamber to submit their proposal ideas. And we will be choosing two of the best ideas. And we, we have consultants who will be working with these um, companies who have the two best ideas. And um, they will work with them to, um, to create a GCF um, concept note where that could be submitted to the GCF. So those are some of the, the, the things to look out for. But going back to the capacity building, we have, as I said, we have a series of capacity building events. The first of which is a MSME webinar on climate change that is coming up where we will be exploring um, this is we're inviting all MS, um, all small businesses, small, medium, and micro to come and attend this webinar. It's scheduled for December 7th at 9 a.m. Um, you could get in contact with the chamber if you'd like to attend. This, ebin this webinar will be um, looking at how climate change affects um, companies along also with the opportunities to invest in adaptation and mitigation, as well as the, the we will introduce the, the consultants will be introducing the GCF to the participants so that they can have general knowledge about the, about the GCF. Also, we will be having a training course for a broader um, pool of private sector entities, larger corporations, um, 
with with in depth um, sectoral um, expertise as well as financial institutions, associations, private sector support services, and we would want them to be involved in this second training where we will um, we, they will be taught how to directly be involved and how to access these GCF funds and how to develop concept notes. So that is more of a training that will run a longer course. And one other thing that we have coming up um, at the end of the month is the call for proposals. So we will be um, launching a call for proposals where we want um, membership as well as the um, wider private sector to, to submit their um, proposal ideas. Because it's from this pool that we, this, this pool that we'll receive, we will be choosing two of the best ideas to develop into concept notes to submit to the GCF for funding. Yeah, um, Leroy, um, just yes. going back to uh, your, your earlier um, references, um, if, so could you kind of enlighten us in terms of um, the, the, maybe the past experience in, uh, of the type of adaptation measures businesses have taken? Or could you give us some examples? And, and... Okay, so we, we had, um, while we were developing our strategic framework, which includes uh, country program. The country program has almost 28 uh, projects and programs. Some are still in the initial stage. So during one of the consultation, we were approached by by the by BSI, ASR. They wanted to develop a proposal for submission to the GCF. So what they did is that they submitted a, a project idea. We then arranged a meeting with um, five Cs, who is the accredited entity. Both entities, uh, both five C's and ASR met several times and they were able to engage a different um, Keen Farmers Association and they develop a concept note. That concept note was uh, submitted to the NDA and then we submitted that to, to the GCF. Uh, since some additional studies were required, uh, the GCF has a project preparation facility whereby countries or, or entities can access up to 1.5 million grant to help assist you with your feasibility study, your social and environmental safeguard. Um, any studies that you want, the GCF has that. So what 5C is that is that they managed to access the almost 1.2 million grant to develop to assist in, in, in developing that full funding proposal with the studies. We are about to finalize that full funding proposal and we are aiming to for submission to the GCF either ending of January or February. So the process, um, as long as you engage the NDA from the initial start, then it will move the, the process much more smoother, okay? Well, and, that's interesting. I, just want, I just wanted to add that, that proposal from the BSI is um, 20 million US dollars, okay, that we are requesting from the GCF. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, would you say, Dr. Martinez, that since Belize is a vulnerable country and we are vulnerable to hurricanes, storms, floods, anything you could say, um, does that put us in a good position when it comes to accessing these GCF funds? You'd say that? Yes, okay. Whenever we are developing our, our projects, um, that is the, the first part that goes in the, in the background. Yes, Belize is very vulnerable to the different impacts of um, climate change, either drought and uh, flooding. So, our engagement with the GCF has been very positive. At the moment, we have almost um, 12 national and regional uh, readiness projects. We have two uh, national adaptation plans. One is for a fisheries and a coastal naps. The other is a water naps that will assist with uh, underground mapping. In addition, uh, we have um, three project preparation facilities, and we have two national. We have one national project, which is the Rural Resilient Belize, and we recently uh, managed to include Belize in a regional initiative, okay? But yes, Belize vulnerability makes it much more easier for us to access that um, financing from the GCF. Ms. Jen, how, how has the feedback been from businesses in, in Belize and, and uh, with the chamber, with the GCF with the workshops and getting into that pool, trying to uh, try to get 
financing, I could say, for, for the project? Well, the first, so far we've only had one um, actual event, which was the Project Launch and Inception Workshop. And the feedback that we received was very good. Uh, we got several companies um, who contacted either the BCCI or the NDA to, to request additional information, also to pitch their ideas that they have and to find out. Some We had some people who were very eager, meaning like they want to know when they can get this money, you know, that type of thing. So that was that was good. So the feedback has been very good and we we expect that with the capacity building that we will be doing, we will be getting more um, interest and we'll be getting, a, um, we're expecting to get a good amount of um, proposals and ideas submitted in the upcoming call for proposals. Well, that's that's great. Um, sounds good, Reggio. Um, you know, financing, especially during this time. Um, you know, if businesses want to learn more, so just contact you at the BCCI, Miss Jen. Yes, they can contact me at the BCCI. You could ask for the project coordinator, Jenny Tucker, or you could just send an email to the bccci.bc.org email address, and that um, information will be forwarded to me so I could assist you and provide more information. And we want we, we want to invite everyone to participate in the upcoming December 7th uh, webinar. So to find out more, it's, it's going to be an hour and a half webinar, so it's not a lot of time, and we will be covering a, 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 a vast um, subject area in terms of climate change, the introdu introduction to the GCF. So if you're not too sure, you could attend the webinar to get a feel for what the project is about and to see if it's something that you would be interested in. You could ask your questions to the consultant and, and learn more. Hey, Leroy, did you um, um, indicate uh, what, what the country allocation um, for the funding would be, or is it uh, on a project-by-project -project basis that, that yeah, so, it will be awarded? Yeah, so the GCF doesn't provide like a, a cap. Well, just on some of the funding windows, yes, we have some different cap, especially when it comes to the NAPs and, and the readiness, but when it comes to the the simplified application process, the regular and the private sector facility, it can be any amount, okay? And any amount, it can be from 10 million at up upwards, okay? And it's, you have like, what I said, I have grants and concessionary loans from interest rates from 0 0.001, so low interest rates, okay? Okay, so um, uh, fundamentally at the end of the day, um, it all depends on uh, your concept and, and and the awarding will be uh, on, that will be the basis for any award that, that will be given. Yes, okay. We always encourage different entities to develop um, good quality proposals, and that's the reason we have a, a no objection procedure whereby the Ministry of Economic Development works closely with the Ministry of Sustain, Sustainable Development and Climate Change. We at the Economic Development do the initial reviewing, and then we send it to the National Climate Change Office who do the second reviewing. But we have a mitigation and, and adaptation officers who also review the, these proposals before they go to the GCF. No, do you have any? Um... Yes. Um... Have there been any challenges in this process so far, or um, is it um, straightforward, um, Ms. Jen or Dr. Leroy? Yeah. So, we recently had a, before the COP meeting, before COP26, we had a meeting with the GCF. Um, what we um, requested was, as national as in a region, is that we wanted the GCF to establish an office in the Caribbean. In addition, uh, the CEO, Martin, CEO Martinez and, and I okay, and myself uh, requested uh, for GCF to establish an office here in Belize since we have the five C's, so why not have the, the GCF? In addition, due, due that the headquarters in, is in South Korea, so the time difference is a big challenge. Uh, so we told the GCF that we wanted for them to make the process much more simple so that we can access uh, grant funding instead of, of just concessionary loans as well. 
Um, Ms. Jen, any last words you would like to tell our viewers and the businesses listening about GCF and what um, it could mean to them if they apply or, or contact you? Well, what what I would like to in what I would like to say is that I would like all the private sector companies, whether or not you feel that you you qualify or this whole climate change thing fits into your into your initiative or into your business, is so to come and join the webinar to find out more information and also to think about um, not only yourself but maybe your um, particular sector, um, any problems that your sector might be having because maybe you can't apply on your own because you're a small company, but if you group together and pool resources together, maybe you can address issues for a particular sector. So, so keep in mind that um, we are here, this project is here to, to provide knowledge, to build knowledge, so we welcome everyone to participate. Hey guys, thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Uh, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, remember everyone listening, December 7th at 9 a.m. Um, is it virtual or will it yes, be Yes, it's in not office? virtual. It, it will be via Zoom. So you could always call us to get the link so you could register or check the social media pages or the BCCI website. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting and let's, you know, let's try to access these funds. You know, um, Businesses really need it, and I, I know it's a process. But you know, even if it if some companies are not, um, they don't get the financing. I mean, doing the whole proposal process, it's a learning experience as well. You know, because we always have other um, others with um, Carib Export and other organizations as well. So thank you for being in, uh, with us today at the, on the business perspective, and uh, wish you a great day. And that's a wrap, Gio. Um, you know, very good day today. And, and, and thank you. Thank you. So, um, thank you. So that's a wrap today, guys, uh, on the Business Perspective Show. I am Jody Williams with my host. Yacoma Sanchez. And and this is the Business Perspective. And, um, you know, bless Belize and bless you guys. Have a great day. Jingle all the way with shelves this Christmas for a chance to win free fuel and cash. Receive a coupon with every purchase of $50 blazing fuel. Complete your coupon, drop it in the boxes provided, and you could be one of our lucky winners. Winners will be drawn on December 7 and 28. Fuel up with shelves this Christmas for a chance to win. Shell trademarks are used under the licensee Sol Brands Incorporated. Doctor, what are your thoughts on abortion? I am definitely pro-choice instead of pro-life. Do you think that teenagers should have access to birth control without parental consent? Absolutely, I would support teenagers getting birth control without their parents. Religion and medicine, in your opinion, do they mix? They should mix and they are mixing as we're speaking now. Let me explain to her. Proper Dosage with Dr. Poyar is an all-new show here on Love. This is where the social issues meet the health issues and the controversy starts now. Proper Dosage with Dr. Poyar returns on Tuesday, November 16 at 9 p.m. on Love FM and Love Television. Are you planning to start a garden? Does your car need to be clean? Don't worry, the Life Skills Multipurpose Group got you covered. If you don't have a car to wash, the Life Skills Multipurpose Group has cars on sale at very affordable prices. We also have cement blocks on sale with skilled masons and carpenters ready to do that driveway, fence, or demolition. But wait, there's more. We also have reliable plumbers waiting for your call because no job is too big or too small for us. So call us at 614-4596 or visit us at 12 Caesar Ridge Road, Belize City, near the Port of Belize. So, I'm going to wonder if by chance I could get your number. It's DJ. Nice. Of course, you have digital, right? <laughs> yeah.
of course. The truth is, your credit lasts way longer with the gym. Like if you top off with like $30, that could last you 90 days. With the other guys, that must say 60. Then with the other guys, you have to use all of your good, good prime credit before you even touch your bonus credit. But with Digi, you could use your bonus credit before you even touch your prime credit. Like what are the point to have free credit if you can't use it how you want? So, what are your number? Uh, just give me one moment. The truth is, Oni Digi offers nationwide LTE coverage, giving you the best mobile experience no matter where you are, fastest mobile data speeds, and the best call quality. We instill trust that makes you believe in us. We are the diversity that unites us more and more. We are a family in constant growth. We are a country that always dreams big. We strive for excellence in all our products and services that enhance our customers' lives. Our Belize. We are Atlantic Bank. And today, we celebrate 50 years supporting your dreams. Atlantic Bank. Together, we are what we dream of. Jingle all the way. This holidays get one coupon for every purchase of 25 police dollars in Una Fuels. Per quart of Una Lubricants or two coupons per gallon. Jingle all the way with Uno, a brand committed with the future. <laughs> And my pleasure to say welcome back to the morning show. Coming to you from our studios in Belize City, I'm Ernesto, and I want to thank the previous hosts of Business Perspective. Thank you very much. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show this morning, that we'll be talking a little bit about, uh, well, basically movies, acting, and so on. And as you know, if you're not aware, that actually in Belize, recently in the last few years, more and more people are becoming active when it comes to producing and directing and films and, and series and so on. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, actually, I'll just throw in here to give you a little taste, Biswood Studios. Um, I have to practice saying that some more. And we'll be talking shortly with the director and the actor in a new series that's now on YouTube and has premiered. But before I go into it, let's, let's get a taste of it. Uh, William, why don't we show that, uh, that piece that we have there?
You just saw the promo there for Countryman. And in the studios with me, I have the pleasure of hosting uh, Tariq Young. Good morning, Good morning. Tariq. It has you here as director of Countryman, but I suspect you're also producer and, uh, and, and the whole package. Definitely wear many hats, exec producer, director mm -hmm. of photography, on-set producer, and director of the series. And also with me, we have the, um, the lead actor. Gildo Nolan, good morning. Yes, and, yes. and you play um, Gerald, who is the, the leading actor in Countryman. Right. Tariq, um, Countryman, tell us, what, 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 what is it? it? It's a full movie or is it a series uh, or what's it going to be? Right now it's a web series. Okay. Um, it's it's a potentially a six-part episodic. Okay. Um, it's a limited series, so once okay. all parts are released, that's the completion of the mm -hmm. story. But it's a story um, around the theme of change. You know, our lead characters face a situation where their entire world is kind of flipped upside down. And it explores how everyday, an everyday average person deals with that kind of situation and circumstance. You know, when Gerald, our lead character, uh, faces that situation, how does it impact him? How does it impact his community? How does it impact his family? You know, and the series seeks to explore through the different characters all of these different themes. Okay, but, but, but the central character is, is Gerald. It's Gerald and Gerald's family. family. And his yes. family, yeah. Yes. And, and he, he leads the cast. How many, how many actors? What's, what's the cast like? Uh, the main cast is uh, four, uh, which would be uh, Gerald, Laverne, Larry, and um, Cindy. Mm -hmm. um, that's Gerald's family and Larry, the mechanic and business partner of Gerald. Uh, but throughout the course of production, we've probably had up to, I think, 17 in supporting cast mm -hmm. with extras, with different mm -hmm. um, smaller bit players, role players, minor characters throughout the course of the production. Okay, you call, you, you're calling your company Beeswood? Beeswood, Beeswood Studios. Beeswood Studios, where, where are these studios? Um, we have bases um, in Los Angeles was where the company was initially founded, but no. we're also now fully based in Belize, um, and fully operational in Belize. Okay. Uh, the company was founded by uh, Roy, Roy Turner, um, and along with our partner, Melissa Arnold. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he had a dream to be able to bring Belizean content to the world stage. Mm -hmm. As opposed to where for a long time, you know, the focus within the industry has been to get more production to come to Belize. Mm -hmm. I believe that during the pandemic, we saw that there was a large gap when it came to content. And it was an opportunity missed because when people were glued to their screens, we didn't really have anything of a high quality, high standard to present to them. Right. So, you know, um, my business partners, they took the initiative to make the investment into this company in order for us to bring authentic Belizean stories and give us a chance to kind of shape our own narrative about what life is like in Belize and the situations that Belizeans face. Well, it, it, we have our own, you're right, narrative, but we, 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 do, we do share the same yes. basic problems with the rest of the world. Um, tell us about yourself, though. Uh, um, you know, those of you who may not be familiar with who you are, you just didn't pick up a camera the other day or, no. or any or, or all this production equipment. You, you have background. Yes, um, I lived in Los Angeles for 12 years mm -hmm. um, working in the film industry um, at all levels. So I did six years in camera, camera lighting and I did um, four years of sound exclusively before I moved um, a two-ton grip and electric package to Belize and mm -hmm. kind of set up shop down mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, I've served as the president of the Belize Audiovisual Industry Association. Mm -hmm. um, you know, been, since I've been back home and the intention was to come back home and kind of help build the industry, help to create opportunities for Belizeans to be exposed to filmmaking at the level of, you know, Hollywood, which is the kind of gold standard globally of what filmmaking is. Because that's where my background and training right. was. Right. You know. So you're back now how long? I've been back um, home uh, since 2014. 2014. Yeah, I've been yeah. off and on. I travel still, but um, mostly home since 2014. I've been working in the industry since at all levels. So obviously you and your partners are convinced that there is money to be made in the film industry? Well, most, most definitely. Uh, in, in previous times, the film industry has been labeled recession-proof because, mm -hmm. you know, the more people get sad and depressed, the more they want to be kind of taken out of that's their right. world. Yeah. And that's kind of what allows the film industry to kind of strive through the different changes. Even in the most recent pandemic that we face, you know, there was a, a slight dip initially in terms of, you know, revenue generated from the industry. However, that quickly rose again and created new opportunities, new, new kind of platforms for media and film to kind of reach the public. So we see that opportunity here in Belize as well. 
especially in regards to the kind of stories and content. Like you said, it's, it's authentically Belizean, but it's also largely mm -hmm. relatable on a global scale. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, incent the, the motive behind our mission statement, which is bringing Belize to Hollywood. You know, it's about, again, putting our kind of story, our narrative out there in the world told by Belizeans. This project in particular, our first um, launch, is fully funded by Belizeans. You know, our partners who are a part of the diaspora in the, in the United States, it's fully crewed by Belizean personnel. Mm -hmm. It's fully casted mm -hmm. by Belizean. It's mm -hmm. authentically Belizean. It's a unique story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the response has been largely um, and overwhelmingly positive towards it because it's it's a story that's really relatable yeah. and we didn't intend for it to be so relatable in this time but that's just kind of how it worked out you know because yeah. this project was started um in 2019. you know you mentioned uh bringing bringing Belize to hollywood um but you're well aware that the whole production and movies and all that has changed uh, we want to come back and talk a little bit about how important hollywood is now when it comes to the to the industry with Netflix and uh, and, and all these other streaming yeah. um, <clears throat> production companies coming on and and creating a whole new world now for a movie, you can have a tiny movie and Netflix will put it on and millions will see it. These opportunities did not exist a few, this is a true. few years ago. But uh, I want to talk to the to the handsome leading man, yeah. uh, Gerald. Uh, you, you have a background in, in in movies a little bit too, don't you? Well, yes, sir, I do. Um, a lot. Yeah. Um, first, I started writing, basically, because, mm -hmm. again, uh, this story, Countryman and others, Mr. Roy Turner is a very, very good writer. Uh, he has a passion for movies, and he has a passion for the development of people, right? So he's, uh, he covers a broader perspective. So um, I could remember like six years ago, seven years ago, the first time I met Mr. Turner, I asked, he said, so what will it take for you to be at your best? Mm -hmm. And that was when the BT production actually was formed. And that didn't work out. You know, I feel miserably with that. I was the so one So this was something before you Before we, met before, Tariq here. Yes. Well, actually, I met Tariq before that, but he was Young Stars. Mm -hmm. And... I admire the way he does things. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from the w movies that I was I partook in because mm -hmm. most of these movies he had his equipments um, rented okay, to them, rented to them yeah. and he also partook in 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 the assistant in the um, production. Mm -hmm. So he is like senior. <coughs> so when I failed at at this um, venture, I introduced Mr. Turner to Tariq. Mm -hmm. uh, because I knew for sure that Tariq was the one that he needed to meet. And from there, well, the rest is history, you know. And yeah. I've started fo focusing more on acting, but I needed to get out of this um, this bad man cast type. Oh, you're yes. a cast man. Yes, man. Yeah, I like that part, you know. <laughs> you know. You know, in a good movie, you have the hero, yeah. right? Yeah. But the hero doesn't look good if the bad man. You have to have the You have to have the villain. Yes. He, he's, he carried the movie anyway. Go ahead. Yeah, but, but that totally contradicts the, the personality that I really need to portray. Yeah. Because yeah. if you notice, um, as far as violence concerned, Belize, they take up that. Yeah. And it started to look real bad. Yeah. So I really don't want to be one part of this mischief making so that people mm -hmm, feel like it's mm -hmm. okay if it be bad. Yeah. Right? And thank God again, Mr. Turner and Tariq, they do a very good job at changing the way how the world will view me mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. as an actor, you know. So yeah. So you do acting full time basically? Yes sir. Yeah. When I know they do that I work for my wife. Oh, you know <laughs> and that's a lady in the yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. Well now that you're a uh, actor she has so follow you around because you know, <laughs> there are the groupies Ooh. and fans and so on right. they come after you and then she had the manager she had the manager yeah, <laughs> so, right. yeah I, mean, I like it yeah. well, why, well, um, what roles have you played in other movies all right I played um, Tariq in, in, in Poseidon in Rex uh -huh. I played Jaguar in Dragon Wars, which is the first international movie that I got mm -hmm. an opportunity to play. Before that, it was Burn, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I got an opportunity to audition and made the cut to be uh, the lead villain in Dragon Wars. And from there, it's Poseidon Rex, Taken Heart. Uh, they had other movies that they wanted to bring, but, you know, that didn't work out either. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I could recall we had an accident mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago where Corinne Nemec got his hip broken and several other actors yeah, and actresses yeah. got injured. So uh, that I believe that caused some issue. Otherwise, a lot of international movie would have been filmed here mm -hmm. by that company. Um, and since then, like I said, if the venture that the, the keep the acting thing going because I believe the industry needs to grow in Belize. Yeah. You know, we need that for, for employ other youth. You have a lot of people who have greater and better talent than I do, but they never get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, these would now represent the opportunity for them. Yeah. yeah. Like we were saying before, uh, this has changed now. You, you, uh, <clears throat> a few years ago when a movie comes on, you either see the big MGM mm -hmm. or Universal doing their thing. Now a lot of movies, you see some like four, five, six production companies mm -hmm. come up because they pool their funds to produce yeah. a movie. And it's giving the small companies and the unknown actors a chance. Mm -hmm. yeah, is well, this where we could fit in? No, uh, definitely. The creative industries on a whole has mm -hmm. had to adapt and change. Um, the impetus for that first was that technology. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as technology mm -hmm. became more accessible, more mm -hmm. affordable, yeah. you know, it the opportunities to be able to create content increase and create content at a higher level. Mm -hmm. You know, but then the pandemic kind of fast-tracked everything in terms of the need of how we look at getting yeah. our product to yeah. audiences, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and Belize is on the cusp, I think, of a breakthrough in the creative industries. We see the most recent, in the most recent week even, with the musical artists getting opportunities, yeah. you know, exposure on the world stage in terms of the pageant, congratulations to Destiny for her win. And, you know, at the same time, we don't want to lag behind in terms of this great economic opportunity that the film presents. You know, like you mentioned, the old Hollywood system, you know, doesn't exist as it once did. Mm -hmm. But Hollywood is not something geographic anymore. It's more of uh, this idea and concept, especially when it comes to the standard of what the industry is. So even though, you know, you have different platforms of distribution, like the streaming platforms, like Netflix, Hulu, these different kind of platforms, there's still the concept of what the Hollywood cinematic experience is still remains. I, I'm more trying to put me in a theater on a big screen, right? especially the blockbuster movies. Yeah. You know, you want to see those. And definitely like that, you know, in, in our initial development as a company, that was a large part of what we were trying to do is to bring that box office experience yeah. to Belize with Belizean content. Because one of the things that has stood out in terms of reception of this project, you know, people complement the, the level of quality and level of production, which is very important to us. You know, the, the music you heard in the promo mm -hmm. is authentic. Belizean music oh, developed by Belizean um, yeah. producer uh, Echo Middleton. Yeah. You know, we're very detail oriented about it because we wanted to create a product that Belizeans could stand by and proudly share and proudly send yeah, it out to say. We're not anything. This is no. Belize. It's, it's all fully, fully authentic, and you know, it's it's an also an opportunity because this really for us is a vehicle, like Gildan said, for us to be able to give people who otherwise wouldn't get the opportunity to participate yeah. in this mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I've I've been training. Uh, crew members for a long time, you know, at union level at, to be able to function on any international production that comes in. You yeah. know, so we, I took that same kind of mentality when it came to professionalism and standard to the production of the films, because my goal has always been to direct, you know, and especially to be able to work with Belizean talent. Mm -hmm. And a large part of the crew and some of the actors, this is their first opportunity to be on set, but we have some veterans with Michante Obispo, mm -hmm. who was recently in the, um, the Netflix um, series, uh, film that came out that Gildan was also in. Right. And then we have like Admiral Thompson, mm -hmm. who is Cindy, our little scene stealer, yeah, who just I mean, uh, celebrated her birthday. So happy birthday to her. Yeah. Um, but she, at joining this project at eight years old and getting the opportunity to be on screen and really develop her own presence and now has an ambition to pursue acting as a career. You know, that's kind of the reason we want to do this as a company. Because before where this wasn't an avenue, now we, we are able to create an avenue and really develop it at a systematic, sustainable level. Because one of the challenges for um, the development of this industry is that you have to gain the experience. You have to consistently be doing. So it, it's, it's almost like uh, an <coughs> error to focus only on the foreign productions that can come in because there's only so much we can accommodate and the cap right. for that is very yeah. limited. Yeah. We have to also put investment and attention into developing local production. Belizean production, I don't even like the word local, more just Belizean production, Belizean production. you know, but that takes investment, you know, and our, my partners, Roy and Melissa, have taken that first step by putting their money kind of where our mouth is, you know, and making the investment, investing in uh, 
$40,000 camera mm -hmm. that's now Netflix approved, you know, all streaming platforms approved in terms of what their minimum requirement for delivery is. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. we, we want to function at that level because, you know, it's not totally dependent on government or any public body to, to do that work. It's really the markets are going to dictate That's the right. success of the industry. Right. It's like any other business. Yeah, actually. and, you know, when we run it the same way, yes, the intention, ultimately, it is a business, so, you know, we are profit-driven at the end of the day, but that's not the only reason we do this kind of work and this kind of production. You it's so that people can really, like, and that's what we've been getting, that people really relate to it. They really, um, a lot of our success so far, you know, Humbly at about around 3,000 views since the initial release of the first episode. The second mm -hmm. episode just released uh, this past Friday on our YouTube channel, Beeswood, uh -huh. at youtube.com slash Beeswood. But people have just been, you know, kind of blown away and amazed by the relatability of it. This is something that they're going through without giving too many spoilers because we want you guys to go check it out. Yeah. You know, but we also wanted to make sure that this was available, that it's not, you know, not unaccessible to Belizeans first. It was important for us that our people are the ones had access to who are driving and have access. Yeah. That's why we launched initially on the YouTube platform and using our social media platforms. And it's also kind of a, a, a kind of way for us to get data to help the industry grow and analyze, you know, what is the demand for mm -hmm. Belizean content? Mm -hmm. You know, is this something that people want to see? Is it something that they're willing to share and ultimately at the end of the day maybe pay for? But for now, it's about getting the brand out, getting the, the, the concept out, plant that seed. Yeah. So that, you know, potentially as yeah. we develop our other projects, because we have a lot of other projects coming down the pipeline, mm -hmm. feature films, um, more uh, series kind of content, documentary-based stuff, where we also are able to show partners, potential partners and potential investors, of the potential of what's here in Belize mm -hmm. in terms of the content. And it's not mm -hmm. just that. You can come here, shoot, and take it and it goes away and we never... Never get to enjoy it. If a, if a movie comes down here and they spend $100,000, <clears> you know, when they go out there and they make $10 million in the box office, there's no percentage that comes That's back right. here. Mm -hmm. Whereas in productions like this, it's different because everything, every benefit that we get goes back into our community, goes back into the country. That's right. Well, we have a clip. Yes, uh, we have seen what we're talking about. Let's look at, let's look at that, uh, William. Already? Yeah, one pipe not the brakes, change the spark plugs. The man lady at the even bring it in for you tune up next week. Good timing too. Susan just text say the pie way. Well, sir. Anything else in me? No man. Things slow bad. Maybe next week, you know? Well on. Hopefully next week pick up. Five extra fifty or stuff, yo. Yeah? <laughs> what? I hope things pick up with you next week. I can copy all this back. What? Man, stop a fool. Go buy your daughter something nice for your birthday. Do you remember my daughter, birthday? Of course, man. I don't know, almost nearly godfather. I got it right down for my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> that jokes. And we later, boss. Hey, Jer. Why you, not, why you like call me boss? You're not about two seconds older than me. Respect, boss. <laughs> Respect. Go. Go. Um, what, 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 what's, what's, um, Gildon, what's happening there? What's the, that sort of relationship between you two in the garage? Uh, um, well, this relationship is, it stems from childhood, basically, because mm -hmm. um, the backstory is his father is the one that really took me in and trained me, showed me the mechanic mm -hmm. work and so forth. But Larry, he now has a hard head, in know, mm -hmm. a sense. He never did want the pop profession, but then when the pop has he ended up taking over mm -hmm. because all the there plus they had me, you know. So unfortunately, this guy betrayed me. You know, as people were seeing that story. Yeah, 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 we don't want to do that. So, you're, so you're, yeah. you know, you've done two episodes. 
Uh, we've released two episodes. Two episodes um, okay. it's, it's slated to be a six-part series. Uh, we're still we're still in production on the last few uh, scenes to wrap up everything. Yeah. So you know it's, we but it was important for us to get it out and kind of start to build some momentum. So you know we're asking people. This is kind of to show as well to how we can help each other in the creative industries just by viewing something, just by sharing, leaving a comment. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to get into the full specifics of the algorithms <clears throat> of all these things, but just being able to like something, share it, it helps, you know, on the back end of it. And we have an advantage as a company that's based um, out of Los Angeles as well that we can fully utilize the social media platforms in terms of monetization and things like that. But you, but you know, to, to the, the only downside we release is our little population, it's small. Um, how, how do you plan to make back your investment? Well, with exposure, like you said, through the social media platforms, you know, viewership, once you hit uh, minimums for these things, the monetization uh, algorithms kick in and you can earn revenue that way. Mm. Um, but it's not just the audience itself isn't limited to Belize, you know, platforms like YouTube is <coughs> on a Well, that's scale. what I was coming at, because I'll tell, I'll tell you one of the, the, the um, one of the, the situations that's occurring now because of the, the whole change with the, mm -hmm. the way movies are put in. I, I can now watch a movie from Poland, I watch mm -hmm. a movie from Russia, and so on. But I notice now that, well, especially with Netflix, you have to subtitles because mm -hmm. you don't understand yeah. what people are saying. So obviously that would happen with this movie. Yes, if it was all of showing. that is taken into so account. Because yeah. right, right now for our <coughs> English-speaking audiences, you know, the subtitles are available on yeah. the YouTube channel okay. provided okay. through that. And as we release in different mediums, you know, these are things, uh -huh. because we, again, have taken this from a very systematic approach to it. And to be prepared for us to be competitive on the world stage, we have to take all of these things into account. It's not like this is a one-off project. It's not like this was just happening. You know, it's all intentional. So we hope through partnerships of distribution, because usually how that works when you kind of link with a distributor <coughs> and they give you the requirements that they need in the countries that they want to do, they also right. assist you in terms of being able to of course. generate that stuff. Because, yeah. you know, we are a, a, a company that's just starting out. You know, we don't have limitless resources. Mm -hmm. My partners work very hard in order yeah, to be able course. to finance yeah. this stuff. And so, it's not cheap to, to even oh, it's not a cheap simple, all, a simple episode like that. You know, this is, this is probably panning out to be a, a 15, 16 day production in total, mm -hmm. in terms of production days. Like I said, it's been kind of from two, 2019, we've gone through two different crews, three different cameras, all of that stuff through the pandemic to make this happen. And you look at an average cost from anywhere between $3,000 to $5,000 a, a day on, on a Obviously. regular production. Uh, yeah. Micro, what's considered micro budget by SAG in the US, which mm -hmm. is the Screen Actors Guild, yeah. is $100,000. That's their micro budget. That's a micro budget. You know, mm -hmm. that's not many your low budget, that's micro mm -hmm. budget in their mm -hmm. eyes. So to look at, but we look at, Imagine if we had $100,000 worth of investment, what we could do with the kind of content that we have and, and what we have available to us now. Because through these, like I said, you know, our equipment is top of the line, all of that. But it's not just the equipment. It's the talent. It's the crews. It's the training. All of these things that will help us be able to build this brand to a level where it is um, financially viable to continue to do this kind of work. Would, would Netflix be your final and Netflix is a goal. Something? Netflix is a goal. Um, yeah. You know, we have content that we're gearing specifically towards that. But building the momentum, one of the things with Netflix that people don't realize, pitching to Netflix, you need an agency or you have to have credibility yeah. with it. The, when they do foreign films, what they look at is in terms of reach and uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. So the more people that get to view our stuff, the more likely it is that it'll be something that is enticing to distributors mm -hmm. to show again that there is an audience for this, because that's what they look at. They look at the numbers. Is this, is yeah. this an audience? Is and this it's, worthwhile it's for us? Actually, I think more about content now than, than, than quality Content has sometimes. always been king. Yeah. You know, content has always been king, but quality helps you be set apart. <clears throat> There's a reason you can yeah. put $100 million into a Marvel production and get back $600 million because yeah. of the level of quality. The quality, yeah. Because if, you know, yeah. the top line cinematic films weren't the best quality, they wouldn't be as successful. That's right. And we wanted to take that kind of obstacle away from Belizean productions is that, no, our quality is there. Our quality is of that standard. You know? we, we, we'll be talking now about different genres. You just mentioned the blockbuster movies, later James Bond, uh, oh, yeah. and, and, and you know Marvel movies and so on. But they use a lot of technology. I mean, they invest a lot of money in it, crew it, it and, is a, and, and It is technology. a costly venture. The type of movies you will make and series, that's a whole different game. That's acting on a set. You know, uh, yeah. or, or, or on the, location yeah, and things like that. One of the beautiful things about films is that it's not one genre. No. A film can be anything at any level. 
You know, for me, as a director, it's always driven by story. If it starts with story, it continues with the story, ends with the story. If your story is good, then it's easy to put the visuals to it. Yeah. You know, but it starts yeah. at the, what the story demands. You know, with the actress' performances, with the kind of lighting, with everything starts from what story we're telling. Mm -hmm. And we've chosen in the early part because we have multiple phases of approaches that we ultimately want to be at that level. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to direct Black Panther 4. That would be yeah. great. And I want it to be shot in Belize in the Maya Mountains and mm -hmm. be something centered around Belizean culture. Mm -hmm. That's my goal, to put it out there. You know, put it out in the universe it comes through. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, we, we have a strategic approach in terms of the kind of content. And we are realistic in our approach of what's available to us. Like, for example, the setting of the, the mechanic shop. That's an actual mechanic shop. Shout mm -hmm. out to Mr. Uh, McCoy and his mechanic shop in Sand Hill that allowed us to come in, utilize that space, where if we were to recreate that in an empty landscape I know, yeah. it would have been an immense budget yeah. yeah you know so the success is going to the success of this company is going to be largely hinged on the support of the Belizean populace not mm -hmm. only monetarily from you know sponsors and financiers but mm -hmm. from the community and we want to make sure that we're doing right by the community again creating things that Belizeans can be mm -hmm. like man this is us check it out support it you know and there's other you know revenue streams because it's a whole that's a whole different dialogue when you think about how to regain the money back from this right our right. first goal is to create brand awareness mm -hmm. hey we're here this is what we can do that in itself is going to lead to other opportunities and you have to be associated with international especially American like SAG or or, or, um, or not production companies or not necessarily not necessarily, not necessarily. Or the union for instance no no well yeah. that's that applies to when you when you're talking about the kind of production work that you're doing and the laws that exist in the country because unions yeah. you know the unions and I was a part of uh, local 728 local 80 which is a electricians union and the grip well, I mentioned that I, I had the, the pleasure of working in in a big name movie with Harrison Ford and I didn't realize that my name was added on to a list. Yes. That I, then I was available. So when another movie came to Belize, they came looking for me. Yeah. And they needed a parrot or needed something. They came to me, you know. And I did didn't realize that. I don't think it's there anymore. I mean, I've been no, out it, of the it, business it for so long. No, it still is. But, but it, it's because it's that's what. And whenever they come, they they, they one of the things that we utilize on set on professional <clears throat> sets is something called a call sheet. Yeah, and the call sheet not only tells you what your schedule of your day is, but it also tells you who participates in it. Yeah. When I was um, president of Bavia, one of the things that we pushed in terms of um, revamping the system a bit was the introduction of call sheets as a way for you to be able to do employment verification and be able mm -hmm. to register your mm -hmm. films, mm -hmm. like things like that. That's the kind of information and training that needs to be implemented and dispersed so that people are aware of how we can properly track yeah. progress. Yeah. You know, because that's. Because you were listed on that call sheet, mm -hmm. the requirements in terms of that being a SAG film was that all actors have to be registered with their union, whether mm -hmm. you're a paid member mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. making an appearance. Mm -hmm. You know, but all of that mm -hmm. <laughs> has no. to, um, and the call sheet is a way, when, when I was um, local 728, the electricians union, the way uh -huh. for me to apply for membership was to submit 30 days worth of call sheet which are signed by the producer, signed by the yeah, AD, yeah. and they do a verification, hey, did Tariq really work as best boy on this project? Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Here's the call sheet as evidence. You know, and if you don't have 30 union days, um, then you have to provide, I think, 100 um, hours. Back in 2014, that was like 100 hours mm -hmm. on a union set. And then you qualify for the unit. That's how you do the employment verification. So you get entered into a database. Yeah, that's, yeah, right now, yeah. as it exists, we don't really have a formalized database to be able to track from the, in front of camera or the behind the camera stuff. And you know, but we do that internally. So we we we're kind of trying to lead by example in terms of how this thing can really work. And the production is an example of that. Like, hey, yes, we can as Belizeans okay. do high level production. You know, I, I, I also movies is one of my pet. <laughs> Pit, um, projects. I, I, lo I love them. I've always uh, liked them. I've had the pleasure of working, actually, go way back when the Rum Runners movie was made here. I tell folks I met uh, uh, Lino Ventura, an Italian wow. actor, and I saw Bridget Bardot because she was in the movie, but she didn't come here. But <clears throat> now, then the old Eden cinema was set afire, and they, that one of the first movies, mm -hmm. and after they had Dogs of War, I met Walken. Mm. You know, uh, uh, yes, time, and these co coming up. Um, well, then I'm putting that. it out there. I'm putting you on the spot because we have a position 
uh, character for Ernesto, so I want all the Love FM fan base <laughs> to flood his <laughs> inbox to tell him to accept the role, <laughs> and we'll see Ernesto actually appear yeah. in Countryman if you guys are successful. If well, as I was just send a limousine to pick me up. Mm -hmm. and, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the limousine has two sliding doors. It costs a dollar. Or two dollars, no, because a two dollar van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, guys, uh, I interesting. I mean, um, so the... Tell us where it's available. How can I see the series? And uh, it's a, it's well, what they call a mini series. Yeah, it's a mini yeah, series. A series. A web so, web web series. In web series. Yeah. This instance, but we have intention for, if all goes well and things begin to open up later in the year and people you know stay safe and we can see these numbers go down, we want to be able to host an event for the last two episodes. Okay. So that we can actually have that box office mm -hmm. experience. You know, mm -hmm. we've been that's been in the works. So we're hoping that things continue to track positively in that regard. Um, but right now, you can check out the first two episodes on our YouTube channel. Just type in Beeswood, B-Z-E-W-O-O-D, mm -hmm. um, on YouTube or YouTube backslash Beeswood. You can also find us on Facebook. Yeah, I, 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 I just typed in yeah. Beeswood Studios. And, uh, and it pops and up. And we're and we're doing are. a rollout. So look out for, we have some posters that's going to have QR codes. So you can use your phone and you can scan the QR code. It'll take you straight to the video. You know, yeah. we're looking to do more promotion rollout. But we want to just say thank you to everyone that has watched already and has shared and supported. I mean, you know, it's a humble 3,000 that we're approaching, but that's all been organic. That's been from go. people yeah. through WhatsApp, yes. through Facebook, through, that, through Messenger. Word of mouth, you know, right. and it's we've heard that it's 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 reached, you know, as far as Nigeria, in the Caribbean, in all the port cities in the US where we have large Belizean communities. Yeah, okay, and we want right. to encourage everybody, you know. And is this I, the standard length of a, uh, an episode, sixteen minutes? About sixteen, 16 minutes, minutes is the standard. Okay. So it's not even yeah. too too hard on your data yeah. to watch it, but I'm sure that you'll be hooked. Um, yeah. Gentlemen, I, I, I'm so happy you came in, and we need to talk about this some more. Okay? This is an industry, as you said, it's fledgling, but it's go, it, it should grow. Okay, one thing I know in Belize, we have talent. Most okay, definitely. Anybody say? Most we definitely. Have, and, again, and look, it and we, and we have the spirit. Sometimes we may have a little ignorance mm -hmm. with it, but it doesn't matter. You know, you, you, mm -hmm. you learn and you... Ignorance can be right? addressed through yeah. education. Yeah. And, That's right. You know, hopefully the next time we do an investment summit, the, the film industry has a seat at that table because... You know, I know personally there's probably eight to ten million sitting out there right now, which mm -hmm. if we had, you know, proper legislation, proper policies in place, and we had a real direction and incentive packages, we could get that money to come stimulate the economy. We definitely can. We need to grow. You know? Tariq Young, thank you for coming in, director, producer, et al. of Countryman that you can see on YouTube, as you just heard. And with us here is the lead actor, Gildan Roland. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, um, I can um, just big up on sure. people. Uh, um, First and foremost, you know, of course, I want to thank God for the opportunity for be alive, for gonna get to this point, you know. It's been a journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mentor, Mr. Roy Turner, of course, mm -hmm. you know, the man really, um, the man supportive person when it comes to human being. And if once he believes in a people or he believes in a you, mm -hmm. he wants to stick with you to the very end, very consistent. Mm -hmm. So, um, Belizeans, this is the opportunity for you to come. I mean, you know, want, you know, see me in the theater all the time, on TV, you know, want to be part of what I do. Beeswood, man. This is the place you need to come. So yeah. just thanks again for the opportunity. Our Big pleasure, my pleasure. Well, we thank you. Talk about this a lot yeah. more, thank obviously. Thank you as well to our, my partners, Roy and Melissa, and to our entire crew who, you know, without the crew, this wouldn't be possible for right. everybody that right. started from episode the one. People behind that. the scenes. Yes, most definitely. Yeah. Thanks again, and uh, we'll be back shortly after this break. I'll be talking to this young man who loves to run, and he's going to run again 101 miles. We'll talk about that shortly. As one of the largest cable and internet providers in Belize, CBC strives to provide our customers with the highest standards of quality, value, and service in all aspects of cable TV and internet. Monitoring our systems closely, our technicians combine creative planning and state-of-the-art technology with years of experience and training to develop and provide the most reliable and advanced cable and internet service to exceed your expectations. For CBC and our team of talented engineers, technicians, and customer service representatives. Delivering less than the very best is never an option. How can we
you support the emotional well-being of older adults during COVID-19? During the COVID-19 pandemic, and particularly while in quarantine, individuals, including older adults, may become more anxious, angry, stressed, agitated, or withdrawn, especially those who need healthcare assistance or have cognitive decline or dementia. Here are four strategies that can help you in supporting an older adult during this difficult time. One, communicate information and listen. Present with accurate, simple, and accessible information and facts about the COVID-19 outbreak, its progression, treatment, and effective strategies to prevent infection. Listen patiently to their needs and concerns. For older people with mild cognitive impairment or early stages of dementia, inform them of what is happening within their capacity and provide support to ease their anxiety and stress. Two, promote positive mental and emotional health. Provide access to available mental health and psychosocial support services, also known as MHPSS services, for older adults and communicate when and how they can access them. Help older people keep regular routines and schedules as much as possible. You can also help them create new ones, including regular exercising, cleaning, daily chores, singing, painting, or other activities. Facilitate regular communication between older adults and their friends and families. Three, help with medical needs. Make sure that older adults have at least up to one month of all the regular medicines that they may require. Explain how to use protective devices in a clear, concise way. Always be respectful and patient. Four, assist with daily activities. Provide older people with details related to how and where they can get practical help if needed, like calling a taxi, dropping off supplies, having groceries delivered, and requesting medical care, as well as information on any locally available social support programs and services. For more information, consult the webpage of the Pan American Health Organization, www.paho.org slash coronavirus. Commercial Cleaning and Product Supplement, CTP, formerly known as Carpet Care Plus, offers a wide variety of professional restorative cleaning services and products in Belize. With over 20 years of experience in the industry, our mission has always been to provide our customers with the best products and services for quality, safe, and environmentally friendly cleaning. What separates us from the rest? The services we offer. Fabric cleaning for all types of carpets, upholstery, walls, and drapes. Vehicle detailing for both the interior and exterior. Total restorative cleaning of ceramic and porcelain tiles for floors, walls, marble, granite, limestone, travertine, clay, and more. Degreasing and polishing of the entire kitchen and all its equipment. Also, custom concrete designs. We are a supplier of the most cost-efficient and economically viable products when you buy our specialized super-concentrated formulas, such as cleaners, disinfectants, deodorizers, and sanitizers. Additionally, we also carry professional cleaning equipment, such as mops, buckets, vacuums, doormats, and window equipment, which are very durable and practical. You can order any of our products online at www.ccpbelize.com. CCP Belize uses only trained technicians, professional commercialized equipment, and EPA certified products. Our products are 100% biodegradable. We also have certified green products, which are used by Green Globe approved companies. Visit us at 68 North Front Street, Belize City, or contact us at telephone 223-1820. Email us info at ccpbelize.com. Good morning, Belize, and good morning. I say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Good morning, 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 good morning
the last few minutes. I'm joined here by Ian Gordon and if you haven't heard the name before, well, you'll hear it today again and you will remember him. Ian is a runner and he loves to run and he runs long distance and he's going to do it again. Yes. Right, Ian? Yes, Good morning. Sir. Good morning, sir. Nice to be back again. So, yeah. last time I think I spoke to you, you were running the key? Yes, that was, was 51 miles. Uh -huh. That was July 1st. Right. Yeah, I did that in Nine hours and 23 minutes. Okay, you run f across Hamburger Ski, no? You, you yeah, run from, the from end to end. Uh -huh. yeah, from I started from my area that's um, south, mm -hmm. the FC area, then I went deep down south. That's like um, like six miles down to the far end. Then from there How far could you reach? Um, you, you had track, how far? I mean, running, I mean, you, yeah, well, you, you had like some mangroves you can't get in. <laughs> yeah, well, you just, <laughs> you know, go through the mangroves. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, just go to the early piece there, so, like, go to where they're just starting to build some building, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, like, six miles away from my house. Okay. Then from there, then you know, turn back. Yeah, turn back. Then you head into town, uh -huh. that's north, then you're over the bridge. Bridge. Yeah, and that's when you go. How far were you able to go? I was able to go, like, like... You reach almost, I think in that direction you could almost reach the end, right? No, um, yeah. I, I was still far from the end. Still far from the end. Yeah, I reached okay. like 20 miles up that way. Okay. Yeah. And then come back down. There's no more road, I, I mean. Then there, um, you, that from off the road you hit to, um, you hit the, the beach. beach. The beach, yeah. yeah. The beach now, no running, no, no. No, it started giving me a little problem, so I decided to turn back at that point. So uh -huh. that I could come back in and make sure I could make it in back. Yeah. Go out there, so yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah, but um. <clears throat> so yeah. you're going to run? Okay, tell me this this time when you're running. Mm -hmm. Where were you running? And this one, uh, this will be the second one where I do this. Um, I did last year. It was 101 mile. Yeah. So um, I'm going to do it again, part two. Heading to do it. Um, last year I did it in at 21 hours and 43 minutes. So now this year I'm trying to go to break that and do it in like 18 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the location is Ladyville, in front of the Yomal, Yomal store. Uh -huh. We go north, take the Boom Road, come out on the Western Highway, go straight over. This time and I'm, I'm not going into um, Belmopan, I'm going across the, across the bridge to Rolling Creek. Okay, you're going to Rolling Creek. Yeah, going to the gas station. That's like basically the halfway point. So I was, I was stopped there for like maybe a minute or so change up what I need for change mm -hmm, up, mm -hmm. you know, fix up and then hit back down. Hit back down to Belize. To Belize. Yeah, but I'll, I'll be coming through the, um, the, the eight miles that a new road will bring you to the airport. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll come through that, that side there, so then come from, come head to Belize the, and then yeah. I'll finish right here again in front of Love FM. Okay. The reason why I finish front of Love FM is because of my friend Ian Mariano. Uh -huh. You know, he, he was uh, supposed to cover the race last year, but, you know, due to the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the reason why I said let me finish in front here because of him. Okay. Yeah. So, like I say again, um, but I think it's going to be a little bit more than 101 miles this year. That's what I'm pushing. That sounds like that to me. Yeah. Because just from here to... to, to Belmopan is basically, well, you're not going in. No, no, no. But you're across, still less like, almost 50 miles. Yeah. And then that, the little road in. Yeah, and then come out yeah, this way. Come yeah, come out this way, yeah. So yeah, definitely well, it's going to be more than that. Yeah, actually, that's that the way I push right. You know, if you set the bar, you set it high. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so who will come behind you got a lot for try to catch up. And the out. idea is to finish it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I have some people that will, um, more females than male, they're um, going to join me, but I ask them to join me. At the um, halfway point, that's the rolling creek, because oh. because like what I say, I'm um, working on time. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want them to start with me, but I need that more encouragement to finish. Okay. You know, so okay. 
And then um, some of the guys from the cycling team, they say they're going to join me too. Riding. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Lion was on a journey about riding. <laughs> riding. <laughs> so you, yeah. have your, 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 you have your followers. You have yeah. persons who, well, keeping fit and all that and exercising. Yeah. So and and like I said, most of the females are runners too. Distance. Yeah. Most of the females are runners, you know, and they decide to jump in. Last, last year, a couple of them, they were the one that really helped me out of it because, um, at the point where I feel like it was like getting like that's it, I'm oh. like they're like let's go Lion, let's go, let's finish this. You know, so I'm like, Yes. And I did finish it. <laughs> you did finish it. But yes, this sir. one songs like more than a hundred and one miles, you're right. If it is, yeah. would it uh, be the longest you've ever run? Mm hmm Yep. Mm -hmm. But the thing is with this now <clears throat> um, I learned from last year. So this year I know I'm more prepared and more and what to say more um, mm -hmm. um i have the more i have more mileage in and more experience yeah. with it so i know what to do how to do and how yeah. you prepare for something like this first mentally mentally yeah. you have to be mentally strong yeah yeah you get your mind right and then from there you just start putting the mileage but is there something you do like well mentally of course but yeah. do, do you not run for a while so no, you get a chance to to rest no you, well last year i did i put in like over 2000 miles in 6 months just to get ready for like 101 last year. <laughs> 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 so yeah i do it much <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yep. so you you so in other words you can't stop or slow down cuz your body then won't be able to yeah, yeah. So you, so have you to keep your body in peak it, condition. Yes, sir. For that. Yeah, you can't just stop and say, "All right, I start again." No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. You gotta stay on the grind. Mm -hmm. And the scary thing, the scariest thing about that hundred and one mile, I thought I was the only one that went through it. But when I was looking on YouTube, this girl, she um, she did a hundred mile, and I thought, like I said, I thought I was the only one. After the, the night, like three nights after, mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep. You had I had crazy nightmares. Why? Well, they're, they're like someone said that I pushed my body beyond, you know what, it should should go. So so running a hundred miles is actually not common. That's no, what you're saying. no, no, no. Oh. That's a um, that's what you call ultra marathon. Ultra, 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 ultra. Yeah. Because we had a I think we had a 25k the other day. In t was it 25k or 10k? Um, 10k. Uh, 10k. And, yeah. Um, 10k. I and was and wondering if you would run, but then I said, but 10k, uh, just a little over five miles. Uh, yeah. Got your warm up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I still, um, th I think that was the one that they did from um, Marianne Jones. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, that, um, they had the 5k, 10k, and right. the um, half marathon. I right, did, right. I did the half marathon. Oh, you did, you did run? You yes. Did run. yes. I, I, was, I, I, asked, I asked them, I said, if you would be running, I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, like I see, it, I'm looking. Actually, I'm looking forward to see if it's gonna have the same feeling or the same effect again. So I'm like really excited to yeah to get well, at it again. It's a little the scenery. This one is going to be a little bit different. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah, and um, they wanted me to change the route, but I said I don't want to change the route because then if I'm going to break the try to break the time. I got to do it on the same road because if I break the time on a different road, then people say, well, that's not the same road. So true. Well, it might have been an easy Well, I don't know if there's an easier road or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, um, OK, <clears throat> have you run like straight out 100 miles from, let's like, say, from here, from here to Corozal? Well, not Corozal, that's too far. But uh, yeah. The, um, that's my next move um, yeah. for next year. That's fair life. I want to do. Um, now I'm gonna change the route. I'm gonna um, do it from Corozal. Come down this time. Okay. Yeah. Get okay. get the north involved mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. But like I say, I just want to go and break that time on that same route. And then I'm already thinking about doing it next year. If Corozal somebody wants down. to join you, yeah, they, they have to make an arrangement. No, so they just, just show up at the site. Just show up. So like, if when you leave from Belize City. No, I am Ladyville. Ladyville, sorry. Yeah. Really from Ladyville. Somebody mm -hmm. could join you? Yes. I just won. I yes. mean, I nobody the around the whole no. video, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> uh, any, 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 along the way. Yeah, like la could. last year, a lot yeah. of um, couple of people jumped in while I was going on the way. Mm. Yeah, so, and I encourage people to jump in yes, and, yeah. you know, you know, give me that extra morale mm. to keep going. 
And you know, like come we chit chat because like I say it's not a race, it's a mm -hmm. run, so we mm -hmm. can chit chat, talk and move on. But is it wise to talk while you're running? You know, you lose your breath, your your mm -hmm. rhythm? No no well that that's different <laughs> from racing. That's true. Yeah. Now when you're the race, now that you're mm -hmm. racing against time, you're mm -hmm. racing so you wanna save everything. Mm -hmm. You know, your two nose and your mouth ain't enough when you're yeah. racing, you know. <laughs> You, know, you want everything to like, because you want a lot of air to come yeah, in. You know, so you yeah. for that. Well, yeah. King Lion, known as King Lion Ian Gordon, mm -hmm. um, that's on December 18th. December 18th, yeah. Uh, you'll start from 4.30 in the morning. Yes, sir. Lady Bill, you expect to be done by when? By um, midday? Midday? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish. <laughs> that would be like what I say. <laughs> do, do it in like 10 hours or so. That would be, yeah. man, that would be crazy. <laughs> Yeah, but um, 18 hours. I mean, I did. It, I finished it um, in 21, in three, three o'clock the morning. So maybe it might be finished between one, two, 12, one the following the morning. The following morning. Yeah. 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 It all depends. All depends on it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we I mean, you could you, like how you like how you um, dolly running, mm -hmm. jumping. Mm -hmm. You could jump into I could probably get on half mile. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Uh, and you want to say hello to anybody or big up anybody? Um, well, up to now I have a couple people that um, volunteer to um, give me the time, like um, the guy, um, Mr. William, I, I don't remember his last name, but he's at Every Sports taking pictures, he's mm -hmm, a photographer, mm -hmm. so he, he's, gonna vol he's volunteering his time to go with me and take photos because okay. we, we'll need that. Okay. And then we have um, Miss Chicky. She she will be um, sponsoring the food for the crew, you know. Then um, what what I'm looking for right now is um, I need a vehicle. That's the thing. I need a pickup, you know, because for support. That, yeah, yeah. Because then um, I got uh, almost everything covered. Just that I need the vehicle. So if anyone would like to sponsor the vehicle for that mm -hmm. and gas, mm -hmm. you know, um, I would. We really and appreciate drive it. it. Because they have to drive yes, yes, we need a vehicle with a driver. <clears throat> but yeah. they have to be behind you all the time or they go to the No, they, could, they, they don't really have to be behind me. They okay. could, you know, service me and enjoy it. Because it's not, like I say, I want everyone to enjoy it. Right. So right. they'll just stay there and like, ah, oh, this is getting boring. You know, you could no. drive up and drive down. up because they know you're coming. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, they they could, and if they feel like stretching, they go ahead. Service me, go ahead, stretch up, and then. Or I think know. you would even accept if they do it in stages. You yeah, know, somebody cover one, 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 one distance, and then another person would do the the, the rest. Yep, it has to be a pickup. Um, vehicle, any vehicle. Yeah, you know, you just need because last year we didn't have a vehicle. My, I mean, uh, my pickup. My, my my cousin lent me his um mm. SUV. Mm -hmm. You know, but then the pickup would be more convenient. Yeah, more convenient yeah. because yeah. it has a back. Yeah, you know. The, the, the um, SUV is closed up, so mm -hmm. they pick up someone or whoever could they be behind how, it. How do you get in touch with you for that? Um, that'll be 628. 628. 66. 66. 96. 96. Okay. Yeah. Ian Gordon. Yes, sir. Uh, he could use your assistance with a, a support vehicle or vehicles. You know, a group yeah. of friends could spend the day uh, yeah. doing it from one distance to the other, a few miles and so on. Just yeah. keep it going, yeah. And then, um, and then, like with the, the police too, I would like them to like, um, you know, if each village or so they could come out and make quality nice, you know, just make uh -huh. the thing feel, yeah. sure, you know, sure. things like that. Yeah. And then I had to tell, I have to give thanks to Mr. Chester to, to give us the um, go ahead last year to go to run through the um, the curfew, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. So I have to I have to give him big respect for that and thanks. And I probably, I you do believe I need, yeah. You need it again. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I do believe I, yes, I surely need it again because I don't think I'll make it. <laughs> It'll be nice to make it for a bit before the curfew, but that'll be a lot of speed. I know. That, that yeah. like a run race. Yeah. <laughs> but you, 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 no, you're a distance runner. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that's, man, it's, it's amazing when you find what you love, you know? But well, you yeah. have to love it, that's for sure. Oh, yes. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And like I say, thanks to everybody who's, who already um, volunteered their time. Mm -hmm. And I like to give thanks in advance for people who will, s <coughs> will be volunteering, like who will bring on the vehicle and other stuff like that. Because we need water, Gatorade. I need a whole lot of pickles because pickles mm -hmm. helped me out last year. Mm -hmm. um, super because pickles make you not catch crumb. And keep that salty oh, in there, yo. I see. Yeah, yeah doing the sodium, yes. Yeah, doing long yeah. distance like that, you need to keep your salty, you need to gather pickles, you know, or else you'll be like 
doing some signs. Yeah, get comps. Oh, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so all, all nighting, so. It's well, necessary. we'll be looking forward to it, um, but it's, it's still a little ways away. Yeah. It's a little less than a month away. Yeah. So um, you can still get in touch with 628 6696. Mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, you can help. Or, like, he needs moral support, you could run a mile with him. Yeah. You know, mile, run, 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 walk, <coughs> ride, right. bring your aim. Anyway. Um, then they still got um, the oh, these skateboards? No, not skateboard aim. Um. Yeah. We roll a skate. Oh, we roll a skate. Yeah, like we roll a skate, you yes, know. Yes, that's true. You know? Yeah, whatever. You know, anything just yeah. come out and give that 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 support. Yeah. You know? Start well, up on keep the us informed and we could always pick it up again closer to the Sure, time. sure I will. And that's yeah. why I say make I come now so that I could start pushing it yeah. to get that help. You Thank know? you very much, Ian. Thank you Joining too. Us and it's 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 impressive. Hey, Running a hundred miles and more. Just full of it. Hundred and one, not forget that one. That's why I say hundred and more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, cause you can't have to be one. No, it could be. Three, yeah, yeah, it might be three, four, yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. So thanks again for joining me, and I want to say thank you. Oh, before I go, I'll go of course, our our news director is celebrating her birthday today, Renee Trujillo. All the best. She's a November person, just like me, and uh, want to say. Enjoy your birthday today, and anyone else out there who's having a birthday, of course, enjoy the day. Um, William, thank you for being MCO this morning. Karen, in the Love FM studio, will be remaining with you uh, with the news, information, music, entertainment on Love FM. And Andrew streaming us on Facebook and on the web. You can join us anywhere in the world and be with us, and we enjoy that. I'm Ernesto. Be kind to somebody today, and of course, keep safe. Belize and beyond, thanks for choosing love. Bye bye. Say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Get up every morning, like go to a family night.